Hey Cake Chomps and welcome back to another video. Now as you probably already see from the video title, today we're going to be tackling something that I get asked for advice on an awful lot. For those of us in the cake community who are big fans of creating more sculpted pieces, sometimes it's not always practical to do things with real cake. Whether that's because it needs to be more gravity defying or whether it's just going to be really small or long and slim. As I say, sometimes it's just not practical to do it with actual cake. Now, of course, you can do it with non-edible things like polystyrene dummies and tin foil and things like that. But personally, I'm a bit of a cake snob. If I'm going to be making a cake, I want all of it or at least as much of it as possible to be completely edible. And so, if there's something that I can't practically do with cake, my material of choice tends to be Rice Krispie Treats, also known as RKT. Now the internet is littered with recipes for RKT, or Rice Krispie Treats, and so I can imagine it's pretty confusing to know where to start if it's not something you've worked with before. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the recipe that I follow to make my Rice Krispie Treat mixture, and we might even have a go at doing a bit of sculpting as well. But as always, instead of chatting about it, let's get to the video. Fancy having a go at making some Rice Krispie treats for sculpting, you will need some rice cereal. I tend to just use budget store brands rather than the more well-known ones, purely just because well, I think it all tastes the same and it works out a lot cheaper. You will also need some marshmallows and I like to use American marshmallows purely because I find that they're a little bit stronger when combined with the rice cereal. I'm a vegetarian so I can't actually eat proper marshmallows or in fact my own Rice crispy cereal mixture so I have no idea how they taste or how they compare to other types of marshmallows I just know that I found them particularly strong for sculpting. I'm sure other ones would be fine as well, but these work best for me. Oh, and these are also available at the supermarket. Um, I tend to pick them up in the kind of, you know, the international food aisle. So where they have all the, like the American style sweets and, and well, all those sorts of things. But yes, from my local supermarket. Now, a lot of recipes that you find online also call for butter, but the butter is when you're making rice cereal treats to eat as just like a snack, as a bar, um, and it makes them a little bit softer and kind of easier to bite into and so on, which of course when we're sculpting with it isn't really what we want. We don't want it to be soft, we want it to be nice and strong. So my recipe doesn't use any butter at all, although you will need some butter just for oiling up your wax surfaces and also your hands, but I'll show you that in a second when we get started. You're also going to need a microwavable bowl. I actually have no idea if this one is microwavable. Guess we'll find out. And then a nice big bowl for mixing. And I tend to just use a big old Tupperware box like this one. In fact, the one I usually use is even bigger, but I can't find it at the moment. So if any of my family or friends have had a cake from me recently in a giant Tupperware box and you've still got it, can I have it back please? But I think that's pretty much everything other than like some kind of regular tools and things, but we'll kind of cover those as we go through. But um, I think that's pretty much enough intro. Let's get started. So I like to keep things super simple for my Rice Krispie Treat mixture. So my recipe is essentially equal parts rice cereal and marshmallow. So the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is weigh out those equal quantities. And I've got my digital scales right here. Now purely based on the size of this bowl here, I'm going to do a mix of around 300 grams today. So 300 grams of rice cereal and 300 grams of marshmallow. Okay, and then they get tipped into a, this giant bowl here. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing again with the marshmallow. 
Okay, and then to melt my marshmallows down, I tend to just put them in the microwave. If you don't have a microwave, you can do it in a large pot on the stove. I just prefer the microwave because it's quicker and there's less chance of things burning. I'm very easily distracted. So these are going to go in the microwave for about one minute to start with. And what you'll find would have happened while they've been in there for that one minute is they will all have expanded and started to kind of melt together in the middle. Taking a silicone spatula, I'm just going to give them a very little stir around the outside. And I'll warn you now, this is probably the stickiest substance known to man. And then they go back into the microwave for another 30 seconds. And that's it. See what I mean? Super, super quick. As I say, this is so sticky. Um, so be careful where you put it down. And after that extra 30 seconds, you'll see that it's almost just kind of melted into one giant mass, which then gets scooped into our bowl of Red Krispies. These I'm going to put aside and ignore. And this we are going to leave for a couple of minutes because that marshmallow, I mean, I can feel the heat coming off it from up here. It's so incredibly hot. And if you were to put your hands straight into that now, you are going to burn yourself. So try to resist the temptation of getting started with it. Leave it for about two minutes and then we're going to get on with mixing. Okay, once that two minutes is up, we are going to start to mix them together, but do be warned, it is still fairly hot. So if you're someone who's quite sensitive to heat, you might want to wait a little bit longer. I'm one of those weird people who kind of almost has developed asbestos fingers over the years, so I do tend to go in there probably while it's a little bit too hot, but it is what it is. As I've already warned you, this is probably the stickiest substance known to man. So if you just put your hands in there straight as they are, you are going to end up covered with marshmallow. So what I like to do is take some regular butter and just use that to completely coat my hands. I do have a separate pack of butter that I just use for this because I would hate, after I've been smearing my hands in the packet, for someone to come along and put this on their toast. But yes, so just some regular butter. And what that would do will just provide a slight greasy barrier to stop it all sticking to you. It's not perfect though, you will see we are going to get very sticky. What I will tend to do first is just try and scoop some Rice Krispies over the marshmallow. Just because that tends to take some of the stickiness and some of the heat out before we really get into the serious kneading. And then really it's just kind of about rotating it around and scooping up all those bits of Rice Krispie. And can you see, even with that butter, it's already really starting to stick to me. Okay, so I have managed to scoop up most of the Rice Krispies, but not all of them. So what I'm now going to do is try as best I can to get as much of this off my hands as I can, because I don't want to waste it. And then I'm going to wash my hands. I have a bowl of hot soapy water right here, so I'll do that now. And then we're going to take some more butter, oil up our hands again, and also the wax surface. And again, that's just going to prevent our mixture all getting completely stuck down to the worktop and stick to itself instead. And then it's a case of just tipping out your rice cereal mixture. And then we're going to start to knead this together as much as we can. Scoop in all these loose bits that fell out when you tipped it out. 
and you should hopefully end up with one solid big lump of rice cereal mixture. Now if I was sculpting a really large piece, like for example my Life Size Father Christmas, which I will link in a video in the top corner. Is it that side? I think it's that side. Anyway, yes, I will link the video for my Life Size Father Christmas cake up in that corner there. It's quite hard to stick this to a structure because although it sticks to itself incredibly well, if you try and stick it to something else now, it's not going to stick. So if that's something that you're doing, if you're sticking Rice Krispies onto a structure that you have made, what I would then do is melt some more marshmallows in the microwave in exactly the same way. So one minute, stir, 30 seconds, use. I would then brush the marshmallow mixture onto the structure using a silicone spatula, not your hands because of course it will be very hot, and then you should find that that will allow you to glue your Rice Krispie Treat mixture onto your structure. Now the way I most often use Rice Krispie Treats or Rice Cereal Treats like this is when I'm making kind of my slightly larger cake toppers, like this dog one that you can see here, this teddy bear, which I quite often use in cakes like this one here, or even my pug cakes, which you probably have seen before, like this one here. Both the teddy bear and the pug were made from rice cereal treats like this. To make those, I'll use about half of a batch this size. So if I split this in half, and then I'll split one of those halves maybe into kind of like a third and two thirds like this, you'll find it's still fairly soft at the moment, so it's not ready to sculpt with. So what I'll then do is just kind of leave those to sit for a little bit before I try and work with them. So I'm just going to leave those to sit for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then I'll come back and show you how to make the structure for one of my miniature busts, like my pugs or my teddy bears. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and my Rice Krispie cereal mixture here is nice and cool. And that means I'm in a position where I can now begin to shape it, sculpt it, what have you. Now, as I say, in this video in particular, I'm going to be showing you how I create the structure for my mini busts, like these ones over here. So they're super, super simple. If you've never tried sculpting with Rice Krispie Treats before, this is the perfect first thing to try, I guess. On that note, if you're somebody who's watching this and thinking, well, why would you use Rice Cereal Treats to sculpt? Why wouldn't you just use cake? That's a perfectly valid point to make. And in fact, I have made miniature busts like these before many times with cake. In fact, the first couple of times I made cakes with those mini busts on them, it was for people's birthday cakes, so of course I, I just made them with cake. Um, and in fact, I've even included them in competition entries before where the category was that everything had to be made from cake. So by all means, you can make them from cake, but cake is a lot heavier. So if you are doing something more like the Christmas pug themed cake that I showed you a while ago, where you had that really tall cake and then that topper on the top. That topper made from cake would be quite heavy and it would need structure within the cake to support it. Whereas with Rice Krispies, actually, as long as you don't go too heavy with the decoration, with the sugar paste fondant or whatever you want to call it, you should find you wouldn't need as much support. A couple of dowels through the cake would be absolutely plenty. Um, it's also really useful, again, as I say, if you're creating something much larger or something that requires some quite intricate pieces. I don't know, an example might be if you were creating the tower from Paw Patrol where you've got the big top that you might do out of cake and then you've got that really thin, and then you've got that really thin, um, whatever you would call the rest of the tower. Um, it wouldn't be practical to make that tiny thing out of cake because why you've got the, t the sh because by the time you've got the structure inside, there's not actually enough room really for cake. Whereas this is something that you could pack around that central support and give you kind of the, the size that you need before you go on to decorate it. I'm probably not explaining this very well. If you have any questions about rice cereal treats, as always, do head down to the comments and ask away. 
I'm usually loitering in there just after the video goes up and then kind of sporadically following the upload. So yeah, any questions, head down to the comments, let me know. And while you're down there, feel free to give this video a like as well. Anyway, these miniature style toppers that I do, you can see are made up from kind of the top part of a body, so like the shoulders and the top of the chest, and then the head. And I tend to make them in two parts. So I'll make the shoulders and then I'll make the head and attach them together later on. You can do it all in one go, but I just find it gives me a little bit more control. We'll start with the shoulders and the first thing we want to do is really push this mixture together as tightly as we can. The more tightly compacted it is, the stronger it's going to be. Okay, and then when it comes to shaping this into kind of the shoulders and the top of the chest, one thing you'll notice if you look at my body, my shoulders at the back, going into my back, are almost flat, whereas at the front here, it comes out more, particularly after all of the lockdown baking that I've been doing. So when I'm sculpting this, I'm going to try and keep one side flatter to form the back part, and this side will be more rounded. And as I say, it's really about pushing it as tightly as you can. We're also going to want a flat top because we're going to be putting a head on it. And for these sorts of structures over here, I don't really tend to worry too much about a neck. But if you were doing this for a person, you would want to consider that as well. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. And if I give you a bit of a a close-up you can see we've got the flat bottom and then the back is straighter the front is more curved and then a reasonably reasonably flat top that we can then go on to put the head on to make the head exactly the same again we're going to recompact really that mixture as tightly as we can and then for something like a pug or a teddy bear I tend to do almost like a flattened oval shape something a little bit like that there. Um, if I'm doing something more like the schnauzer, where it has that longer muzzle, I might add that on at this point as well. So perhaps I do that with this one here. So that's a very quick version, but can you see? So for something like the teddy bear or, or the pug, it's, it's very much just that flattened oval shape. Whereas something more like the schnauzer or another type of animal that has that longer muzzle, I will include that when I'm sculpting it from the Rice Krispie cereal at this stage. Again, it is something that you could add on afterwards, but it just, it gives it a little bit more strength before you start building things up with the decorations later on. Now, these are almost ready to work with, but what you will find will happen is that the longer you leave them, the stronger they will get. So if you were doing something much bigger, where the weight of the top piece going on could push down on that lower piece. So again, if you were doing almost like a life-size human head and shoulders, you might find that you want to give it a bit longer to firm up before you start assembling things together. But where these are quite small, it's not really something we need to worry about too much. Now to finish these off and actually turn them into the structure that I will go on to decorate later on to make my miniature busts, I use one more thing, and that is chocolate ganache. Now for those of you who don't already know, chocolate ganache is basically a combination of chocolate and double or whipping cream that have been combined together to create a smooth kind of creamy blend that is perfect for cake decorating, for turning into chocolates, for all sorts of applications really. Now I have some dark chocolate ganache here that I made using dark chocolate and whipping cream. And my method for making ganache is over on my website. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that down in the video description rather than take you through that here and now because otherwise this video will end up being hours long. But what you will see is that over time ganache goes quite solid. And this one I made a couple of days ago, so it's probably a little bit thicker than I need it to be right now. So I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave for a few seconds to soften it up slightly, and then it will be ready to use. So that's just been in the microwave for 20 seconds, and then another 10, 
and it's almost where I want it to be. You're kind of looking for about a peanut butter consistency for what we'll be using it for today. And this is basically going to first of all be the glue that sticks our sculpture together, but it's also going to be used as a coating to give us that kind of flawless finish that we're looking for when we are building that structure to decorate. Again, if you haven't used ganache before, this makes a fantastic media for covering your cakes with before you cover them in sugar paste because it allows you to achieve a really, really flawless finish, giving you the perfect foundation to cover. It's also a lot more heat stable than buttercream, so if you're finding that you're struggling when working in heat with buttercream, I would definitely recommend checking out ganache. And don't forget the recipe for my ganache, or my kind of technique, is down in the video description. Okay, so I'm going to be building my structure onto one of my plastic reusable cake boards from Cake Tools Direct. And again, if you're interested, I can put a link down in the video description. The reason I like working on these is purely because they are reusable. So I can create my cake topper on here, and then when it's finished, I can take it off, put it onto my cake, put the cake board in the dishwasher, and it's ready to use next time. Now to stop my mini bus moving around, I'm going to start just by putting a little bit of my ganache, ganache even, onto the cake board, and then putting that kind of shoulders part of the bus straight on top. What that would do is kind of almost glue it in place so that as I'm working with my structure or my sculpture, it's not going to move around. And then it's as simple as taking your spatula or your offset spatula as I'm using and covering your structure here in the same way that you would cover a cake. Kind of one of the biggest mistakes I see people making when they're using Rice Krispies for the first time is that they just go straight over them with the sugar paste. And of course, Rice Krispies are small, round and knobbly, so they don't give you that perfect flat finish. And as we'll all know, when you're covering cakes, if the foundation isn't flawless, the finish of the sugar paste won't be either. It just highlights exactly what is underneath it. So by covering this with ganache, it will kind of slide into any of those cracks or grooves and give us that nice kind of finish over the top that once it's set, we can then cover with sugar paste. Now don't worry about being too neat at this stage, we literally just want to make sure we've filled all those holes and then we need to smooth this. Now as you'll have seen in most of my cake decorating videos, I tend to usually go around my cakes with a very basic cake edge scraper like this one here. I think this one's from PME and they cost literally about a pound. But this isn't a round cake with straight sides, so this isn't going to be useful to me today. Instead, we're going to use one of these flexi smoothers that you've seen me use in videos before, usually to do almost like the finishing touches when I'm covering my cakes. And what I like about these for covering awkward shapes like this is they are flexible, which means I can bend them to match the angle of the cake. So I'm just going to go around the edge. First of all, just to smooth that bottom. But when it comes to these curves, that's when we're going to basically just hold the smoother with our thumb on one side, fingers on the other side, and we can bend it. And we're just smoothing that ganache down, getting rid of any excess, to really help us achieve that perfectly neat, smooth finish. Now don't panic that you can see the Rice Krispies through the ganache, that's absolutely fine because of course we are going to carry on to cover this with sugar paste. It just means it will be smooth to the touch. And then again, don't forget we had that relatively flat top for the head. So we want to make sure that's still there. But to be honest, it's as simple as that. That's pretty much ready to go. Now, of course, these are really simple structures for really simple sculptures. So if you wanted to do anything more complex with this bit here, for example, having some definition between the arm and the chest, you really needed to have done that before you go in with your ganache, and then you need to make sure that you 
use your scraper to keep that definition as you're working. You don't want to fill that with ganache because then it will be gone. Because what you'll find will happen is if you leave this to dry and set, that ganache will set nice and hard like it had done in the bowl and then you'll have to almost carve in again. Moving on to the head, what I'll do in exactly the same way I did to glue the base to the board is I'll put some ganache on top, take the head and place it on top of that ganache and that will just glue it in place. Now it's not solid yet, don't forget, so you still want to be quite careful at this point or you could leave it for a while and then come back to it before you carry on. But then it's exactly the same as we did before. We're just going to cover the head with the ganache and then use the flexi smoother to smooth everything down. But yeah, essentially once you get to this stage, you are done. That just needs to be set aside to firm up, probably ideally overnight if you can, and then it will be ready to cover in your choice of sugar paste or fondant or modeling paste or what have you. What you also didn't see is that sneakily off camera, I finished off the one with the snout as well. So if I put them kind of next to each other, you can hopefully see the difference between the two. And as I said earlier on in the video, this one here is what I use when I'm making things like my pugs or my teddies for my gift of a hug cake. In fact, why don't I bring them down into shot so you can see this one here is what I use when I'm making things like this teddy here. And this one here is what I use when I'm making things like my little schnauzer. Now, of course, I'm not going to be decorating these today. This was very much to show you how to work with the Rice Krispie treats, but in exciting news, I will actually be filming a live tutorial to show you how to go from my chocolate covered Rice Krispie structure that I've made here today, the one with the snout, to my miniature schnauzer head over on Facebook later this morning. So if you're watching this video as soon as it's gone up, in about an hour's time I will be in the Incredible India Cake Magazine Facebook group demonstrating how to make this adorable miniature schnauzer cake bust. So if you fancy checking that out, you can of course come and join us live and I will put the link to the Facebook group in the video description. But once it is finished, once the video is done, of course it will remain available. So I will then pop back and change it to the permalink, I think is the term, so that you can go and watch it as and when you are ready. Now just before I go, I did also want to add almost like a bit of a PS where I show you that when you are working with Rice Krispie treats like these, it's not only about creating kind of organic shapes like these ones, they are also absolutely brilliant for carving as well. So if you need to do something that's quite defined, um, a car cake or a, a car cake topper are probably the best examples of something that you might need to be really, really square and accurate. Rice Krispie treats are absolutely brilliant for carving. So if you have a really sharp knife, and I tend to prefer one with a thin blade and serrations, you can saw through your Rice Krispie mixture. And can you see, it gives you a perfectly flat surface that again you can go on to cover with your ganache and that will help you making things like cars or even buildings, anything really that you can think of that needs to be really perfectly geometric. That's probably the best word to use. But anyway guys, that is how I make my rice cereal mixture when I am using it to create my miniature sculpted cake toppers. I do hope that some of you found this useful and as I said earlier on in the video, if you have any questions about working with rice cereal mixture or rice crispy treats or RKT or whatever you prefer to call it, then please do head down to the comments and ask away because I will be only too happy to help. And of course, if I can't answer your question, I'm sure I can point you in the direction of someone who can.
As always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up down below. That will really help me out and let YouTube know to show this video to more people. And if you haven't already subscribed to me here on YouTube, please do that by hitting the big red button down there on the right. If you are already subscribed and you'd like to receive a notification next time I upload, you can also click on the bell icon. Um, and other than that, I do think that is everything. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you at the same time next week for another video. Until then, happy caking.